been seeing on TikTok some real funny ones about like chasing like a ping pong ball around and like <laughs> the, like that one. That one gets me. I don't think that's good for anyone. But um, I think I'm gonna have to go with the I probably should say it, but the gym junkie photos. Like I'm, oh, I no. I love you know I love how like when people go to the gym like get, get around it i'm sorry if you do it um but i love a gym photo i love a gym photo but it's just it just <laughs> she's it, caught me out too <laughs> Charlotte Grant, super pumped uh, to have you on. It's a pleasure. Um, you're part of the Chats Unfiltered family now. Um, quick, before we get into anything, nickname. What, what are we talking here? Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, but yeah, Charlie's the go-to. Uh, oh. I get a few chucked around, but Charlie's the go-to. <laughs> All right, beautiful. I'll call you Charlie then. We're going we're gonna to jump straight into it. Um, before the app, I sort of ran you through a few, a few things, um, but we'll get straight into your career. So... You're a twenty-year-old, which I did say to you before the chat. I can't believe you're twenty. I thought you were way older than that, just from just from seeing what you've gone through uh, so far. But uh, you're a defender in women's football, making waves, as I like to say. Um, in 2018, you signed with Adelaide United. Uh, over three years, you made 35 uh, around the 35 appearances. Talk us through that. So that was that your first sort of professional contract? Yeah, so Adelaide United was my first professional contract. I signed when I was 17, I think it was. Um, and, yeah, it was um, it's, it was a dream of mine to play for, for Adelaide. I, I always would go to the women's games, um, get the girls' signatures, be one of the fan girls, and then to be wearing the jersey and playing on, on the pitch for Adelaide United was, yeah, dream come true. So I'm really grateful for the club and um, great memories with them. Yeah, so you're from South Australia? Yes, from South Australia, born and bred. Yeah, all my family are pretty much in Adelaide as well. So, um, yeah, love love Adelaide. I did live in Sydney for a little bit um, when I was uh, started to – I moved into the Future Matildas program and, and yeah. that was based in Sydney. So, um, but, yeah, Adelaide girls, always Adelaide. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. That's just, yeah, playing for obviously your hometown would be um, pretty unreal. And like you said – uh, with the Matildas, you were part of the 2020 Olympic squad. Like, just that in itself is nuts. Just to go to the Olympics, explain, just talk us through some of the things that happened in the process, and just some highlights of going over there. Yeah, it's still so surreal to me to say that I've been to the Olympics. Um, it was, oh, it was an incredible experience. It came. Um, like it all happened so quickly. I just had my first call up like a month or two before the Olympics and then to be selected was, yeah, it was amazing. And we stayed in the village for the first couple of days and it was um, to see, I saw the likes of like Patty Mills, That's Ash nice. Barty. Yeah, and um, I even spoke to Emma McKean, I think that's how I pronounce her last name. Um, and like, oh, it was, they were all so humble and such nice people but it's just so like inspiring and motivating to be around them and just to know that like there's something because a kid when I knew sport you could play for your country not just soccer but is like being at the Olympics was just a, a goal and like it was just yeah amazing that I've I'm so grateful to have been able to experience that yeah yeah that's nuts I just going like in like like I said you're only 20 so that's just nuts you've got obviously it's every four years the Olympics the chances, yeah. obviously, if you're starting that early, you can go so many more times. So, unreal experience. Like, I couldn't even imagine going live. I'd watch it on TV going, wow, like, it'd be amazing. <laughs> um, so, then in 2021, uh, you've headed overseas. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of this club. I know it's a Swedish club. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you take over. Um, <laughs> what, what, how do you even pronounce it? I wouldn't, I wouldn't even give well, it a crap. I'm not very good. And <laughs> you play for the club. I know. So at FC Rosengard, but I think there's a bit of like a a twist with the. I think it's like Rosengard or something. Nah, give, like give that. it, give it a full crack. Give it a full crack. If you're telling <laughs> someone who you play for, give it a real everything into it. <laughs> FC Rosengard. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you play for. So 2021, you've headed over there. But I've always been interested in in professional sport. Um, so you've finished up at Adelaide United. What's the next sort of phase? Have have you been in talks with them for a little bit? Have they contacted you? Where how has that process gone about to get over there and continue sort of playing? 
Yeah, so it was one that came quite out of the blue, this one. So it was always a dream to play in Europe and overseas, but I wasn't sure how soon that would come around. And after that uh, 2021 season, beginning of that, um, I got contacted by by the club and um, they said, um, and I only had actually two days to decide if I would take it or not because the transfer window was closing so it was all like came out of the blue the decision had to made had to be made quick but I looked into the into the club and into the league and my friend had actually just gone over to the league as well so and FC Rosengard are one of the like top top clubs in in Sweden and so it was just such a easy decision to go like this is gonna make my football better so I have to make that move and I'm so glad I have it's it's been such a great experience I've grown so much as a player yeah so like for anyone that's watching like you're obviously not in Australia right now but this, this is my so you're wait wait are you over there with them at the moment yeah yeah so I'm with them we're in, we've got we're in like pre-season and we start next week the season starts properly next week yeah so i'll put it out there you are my first international zoom call on the podcast <laughs> which is i'm wrapped about it i can't believe how oh. good the connection is i was i was super worried i was like this connection is going to be shit house and it's going to be terrible <laughs> but this is the clearest day so that's good um yeah now that that's unreal so when i think when, when the first thing you said was transfer window instantly little, little kid me just goes to fifa that's firstly sick <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like to make that move, um, that's nuts. What what was the hardest thing about it? Obviously, leaving family and and whatever. But what were some other tough things about moving over? I think um, well, because I'd been I had been away from home for in Sydney, so not as far, of course. But so that had helped me deal with being away from family a bit more. But I think the hardest thing is that is that time difference, like. Being able, like right now, I can only contact my family from like the latest is probably 1 p.m., which we train from like 10 to we get home at maybe 2 p.m. So it's that's probably the hardest at times. But then also the cooking, cooking I'm okay with, but then cleaning <laughs> up, I've got no dishwasher. So the dishes sometimes pile up, but that's probably. <laughs> The hardest. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Just just normal chores that you wouldn't have to do when you're living at home. Love that. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get in. Uh, we'll talk about free a little bit more down the track. Um, but I did send you a few things. I'm I, I know you're a little little bit prepared. I'm hoping you've got a few things down. Um, firstly, the best um sort of advice you've ever been given, if you've got something for that one. Yeah, the best advice I've been given is to focus on what you can control and not what you can't. So um, I think it was one of our psychologists that told us that, but that's helped me through, yeah, some tough times and, um, yeah, just to refocus on your brain, it, like fo reset your brain and to focus, yeah, on what you can control and just makes you not stress as much, I guess, and put your energy in the right places. Mm, yeah, nah, that's good. That's good. I, I, I'm a massive fan of this sort of stuff. And especially on TikTok, you're like scrolling through and you see some motivational stuff. And you're like, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to go to the gym. Let's go. Let's get it on. <laughs> um, the one one that I love is that it's, uh, it's very simple. What if it can turn out better than you ever imagined? So with that, unraveling like i just loved it because like for this podcast especially it was just me and a few mates going well let's just do a podcast and it was just like yeah. oh but people will judge us so you know it's a bit out of the normal but it's just like what if it can turn out you know even better than you even thought the end result was so i think in life just just got to do things and and get it going next one worst advice you've ever been given uh, you know, I found this one hard to think about, mm. this um, this one, but I can only think of funny stories from this one. So um, I remember as a, as a kid, of, I don't know what year I was, but uh, the, the teachers actually told me to maybe stop hanging around with boys to avoid like getting injured or something like that. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I'll hang out with the girls today. And we were doing like piggyback racing, like on each other's back. And I was holding one of the girls and was running like, and then tripped over, banged my head and then blood everywhere and had to end up getting stitches and all that. So I think that goes to, that goes to show, it doesn't matter who I was going to play with, it's going to play hard. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, all right. Your favourite quote? 
favorite quote uh, i think the best one is quite a simple one just like treat others the way you want to be treated it's something i've always sort of gone by i just think you just never know what someone's going through and it's so important to like you never know what how far a kind gesture might go and um yeah so i think it's important to do that and especially in this sort of time where so many things are happening so um yeah yeah always be together yeah, unreal. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Michael, I, again, I love this sort of stuff. So go, go. I'm going to share it with you. Like, I just know you want to hear it. I so like- I'll share it with you. Um, when it feels scary to jump, that's exactly when you jump. Otherwise, you end up staying in the same place for your whole life. And honestly, that relates to like you moving moving over and playing somewhere else because, you know, you could have easily just stayed in the same spot, been comfortable, whatever. Um, but you've jumped into what was scary and bang, look at you. Yeah in an international international zoom call uh, on a podcast you beauty let's go um hardship in your life um probably the biggest one was i tore my hamstring uh last uh about a year and a half ago now so it was uh it was about four months it took me to come back from it but then it was a reoccurring thing that happened so it, yeah it was in a time the time i came back from it was the first time I was going to be involved with like a talent ID camp for the Matilda. So I thought this is my chance. This is, I have to be ready for this. And then it reoccurred again. So I thought I'd lost that opportunity. And then actually when I first got over to Sweden as well, it reoccurred just before my first camp with the Matildas. So then um, that like, it was just in my head then going, am I going to be like, am I going to be okay to sprint? Like even when I was back, but I'm finally in a place where it's, uh, I feel confident in sprinting and not having to worry about that. So touch wood, it doesn't touch, happen again. <laughs> touching all wood, touching all wood. <laughs> does, does that affect, like when you're in, when you're in talks with, I'm going to go for it here, FC Rosengard, if you're, when you're in talks with them, does that does that come up in conversation, obviously, with injury? Like, are they hesitant to take you on because of because of that? Well, that's what I was really – I was actually really worried about that because when I, I uh, re- it reoccurred in, um, at, right at the end of the W League season with Adelaide and they – I thought, well, I have to mention it to them because what if I get over there, I'm not um, ready. And I mentioned it to them and they were okay with it because it, it was only a short-term thing and – um, so okay, and they helped me with my rehab when I came into into the squad. So, um, but yeah, they've been really good with um, any little injuries and um, with yeah with anyone. So it's yeah. that was good. Yeah, nice. Changing it up completely, a huge life highlight. That's that's hard to choose. Um, You've got so many. Uh, I could imagine how many you have if, as well. Yeah, <laughs> if I can, I'll. Put it down to three, yep. so if that's okay. Um, the Olympics that like we spoke about before, that was just still so surreal to think about. Um, yeah, just a dream come true. But then also my debut for Matildas came after the Olympics in Ireland and um, that was – it was just so rewarding to know, like, all the choices and sacrifices my parents and family have had to make as well to get me where I am. It was just – um, yes, yeah, so to know it was all worth it coming there and um, doing everything um, to get where I am. So that was amazing feeling. And then last one is, um, so is playing at home for the first time. It was just, uh, I think that's when it really sunk in that I was playing for my country because the the crowd that got behind us were, oh, that was incredible. It was like such an incredible at- atmosphere. And to think, like I used to be the one sitting in the stand cheering the girls on and to then be the one on the pitch was, uh, it was amazing. But yeah, so they're the three main ones, but um, yeah, uh, it's hard to choose just one. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's nuts. Like growing up and then obviously being out there. Were, were you the youngest on the, in the Matildas? No, so I think the youngest is Mary Fowler. She's, I keep thinking she's older than what she is because she's been around for a while and she's only, I think she's 18 still. Um, that's nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, well, that's, yeah, to, to play. I, I couldn't even imagine just, like, coming fresh out of high school and be like, yeah, I'm just playing for my country. Yeah, no big deal, guys. Like, no big deal when I'm playing for my country. Yeah. Um, we'll move We'll move on uh, into some funny things. Again, I did, I'm pretty sure I sent these ones through to you. 
Um, have we got any icks? Because I'll start off, right? I'll start off. I heard, I was listening to Inspired Unemployed. Well, I love them. They're like my favorite, one of my favorite podcasts. And <laughs> this relates to sport in, like with women's sports so much. It's so bad. I probably shouldn't say it, but um, <laughs> they had an ick. And one of them was girls that just can't, like run normal like they just <laughs> look really unco and i just like i've because i've grown up with so like especially women's football has come through when i was growing up and just so many girls going watching the games and they just like run so just awkward and i'm like just run normal i don't i don't get it that's just one of my icks, and it's probably so bad i shouldn't say it but it is have you have you got any that stick out <laughs> Oh, there's a piece of, I've been seeing on TikTok some real funny ones about like chasing like a ping pong ball around and like, <laughs> the, you know, like that one, that one gets me. I don't think that's good for anyone, but um, I think I'm going to have to go with the, I probably should say it, but the gym junkie photos. Like I'm, oh. I, I love, you know, I love how, like when people go to the gym like get, get around it i'm sorry if you do it um but i love a gym photo i love a gym photo but it's just it just <laughs> she's it, caught me out too good on you guys for like getting to the gym love that but i'm sorry for some reason it's nick <laughs> i've literally posted a photo from the gym like two hours ago and you said that and i'm like bye no way. Okay, it depends no. on the photo. It depends yeah. on the photo. Some are okay. Some that, are okay. There's a big di- Okay, so I'm, I'm sticking up for some of the boys here. There's a big difference, all right? There's a difference between the gym junkies that are like, they're just like posing like crazy in photos and like they have like the stringers or the stingers or whatever they're called. And then there's just me, you know? I finish my workout. I just love a nice That's just photo in the mirror. Just, how you going, everyone? I just went to the gym. I just want you all to know there's a big difference. So, no, that's, like, the, that's what I'm talking about. The ones with, like, the like, yeah. real posts. Like, that, what you're doing, fine. I, I'm, like, that's good. Acceptable. That's good. Acceptable. <laughs> all right, that, good. Like, the ones, otherwise, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I know you didn't have some of these, so we'll just play it by ear. Um, your worst date experience, if there, if there is one. You know, I haven't been on too many dates, unfortunately. But um, we're going to have to go with the one that did pop into my head was um, the uh, – it was on like a 40-degree day and um, we decided to go mini-golfing. It was a stupid idea because then um, I I was just getting sweat patches like from – like which is embarrassing in itself. And then – and then playing golf, I didn't. I don't think I won, so I hate losing. So that yeah. lap's gone straight away. Then we went to have sushi, which sushi on a date is not good because it's just messy. I yeah, love sushi. Nah. I was dropping it everywhere, and it was a disaster. And then look, I don't think he. I think my dad had to drive us around too because I don't think he had his license at the time. Well, I didn't either. But um, yeah, so it just all oh, it was just. So it was just a, that, just a jumble of things that yeah. just shouldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah. there was nothing wrong with that. It was fine, but it was, it was just, a, just the whole day. <laughs> well, I, I saw a thing and it was like, the, the things to stay away from on a date, especially a first date, is one, movies. Because well, you can't talk during a movie. Like, you don't go to the movies, yeah. it's pretty self-explanatory. Second one was sushi. Because how the hell do you eat sushi with a girl or a guy on a date and not make a fool of yourself? Like, like <laughs> it, it, was, it was brought up like, do you go, do you just go for it and do you just chuck the whole thing in so it's like try to be clean or do you like try to chop it up and just be awkward as fuck about it? Like and there's just no way it's going to come off and it's just the worst idea to go to sushi. But um, yeah. um, all right, one thing, so I don't know how innocent you are. You're probably very, you know, professional athlete, all that. Um, but one thing, if there is something you've regretted uh, the next morning or like after a weekend away with mates, like you've woken up and you've just gone, oh no. That did not just happen. Why did I do that? You, you're 20. There's got to be something. Well, I'm actually, I, I'm not a, a drinker. I don't actually, I've never um, had alcohol before, actually, fun fact. But um, I'm always living through my friend's regrets. So yep. um, I like it. I can't actually think of one of theirs. But one that, because I was sober, it was embarrassing for me, is um, we. it was after we won the um, league, actually, and we are just out at, a restaurant or something or a bar or something and then 
the girls were doing odds on of who to, to ask the bartender out, like his get his number. And of course, like, it lands on me. Of course, I get the same number as the girl. And then but I have to go up to the um, bartender, ask for his number. And I wouldn't. I, I would have felt better if he just said no. But he said, I, I just felt embarrassed the fact that he said no that he was married. I don't know why. I was just embarrassed he was married. <laughs> Like it was just, I just felt so awkward, and that's um, yeah, that was probably the most like I just felt embarrassed and awkward about, and then I just wanted to get out of there. But (laughs) like locally, when when you're sober, it's so so much worse because you can't even play it off like oh I was so drunk or whatever, or you like you're not you're not influenced. It's just like I I just. I was going to him to get water the whole night as well, so he knew I was stupid. <laughs> oh no! We're oh. going to go into a quick fire, which I like to do with a few, a few guests. Try to do it with everyone. I'm just going to ask you a question. The first question I'm not going to ask ask you because it was an alcoholic beverage, but we'll we'll go something else. Oh. Um, we'll just go a few questions, answer them as quick as you can, um, and yeah, we'll get to know you a bit more. So, firstly, we'll change it up. Favorite soft drink. Oh, um. Don't you dare say you don't drink soft drink either. Come on. <laughs> you are a water person. No. No. Okay, I'll go with, let's go with, you can't go wrong with Coke. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with Coke. Summer or winter? Yeah. Uh, summer. Favourite teammate you've ever played with? Oh, big question. Oh. Um, got to pick favourites here. you got to pick favourites here. Oh, Carly. She's my best mate, so I have to go with Carly. Uh, are you a morning <laughs> coffee or a late night dessert girl? Um, late night dessert. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Good. Favourite AFL team? Oh, the Crows. Go the Crowies. <laughs> TV show that you're into right now? Oh, I'm Grey's Anatomy. I'm, I'm <laughs> so... <laughs> What? That's Grey's so Anatomy. random. I have not heard that. <laughs> I know. It's a random one, but I'm hooked. <laughs> uh, a chore that you absolutely hate doing? Pardon? A chore that you absolutely hate doing. Oh, cleaning the dishes. Good. Uh, <laughs> iPhone or Samsung? iPhone. And your most used emoji? Oh, the little smiley face with little hands going like this. You said that one to me before when you're like, super kid. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, she definitely uses that a lot. All yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll get, we'll get, we'll just keep smashing through. Um, I put on Insta. Uh, the other day, just if anyone had any questions for you, um, Matty Walton, a good mate of the podcast, he he put through, is there anything that Sam Kerr does, because he's a big Sam Kerr fan, anything she does at training um, or off the field that separates her from, from everyone else? Um, I don't know yeah, if you've had much I mean, involvement with her, but... Yeah, I, she's, she's a funny girl, Sam. She's a good, um, very good role model to everyone as well, and... Uh, yeah, she uh, she's always practicing her shots after training, and she's just the way she holds herself. I, I think it's just like, uh, she, I mean, so much would be going on in her life. Like she'd have so much, but you can't tell. Like she she just she's able to separate things. I think, and um, yeah, she's uh, very professional in what she does. Yep, unreal. Um, Anthony says, I don't actually. I didn't look into this. I really should have had his poor performance on my end. Thoughts on returning home uh, for the upcoming? Is there Australia versus New Zealand? Uh, yes, there's Australia versus New Zealand in um, in April, actually, beginning of April. Uh, hopefully, I'm in selected in the squad. Um, yeah. uh, but yeah, it's really exciting because it's in both Canberra and Townsville. And Townsville, I've got my uh, I've got uh, my auntie and uncle and some of my cousins there. So that'd be awesome if I'd be selected and be able to go there. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Uh, Hayden's got a couple of questions. Favorite game you've played in? That again is so tough, but just try yeah, it. Even if there's like a couple, couple that you've got. That's a tough one, but I think um, probably that probably the uh, when I played against Brazil um in in australia the first time at home the one i was talking about earlier it was just like the atmosphere around um uh, like around the stadium and then it's and the martyr like one of the best players ever um was on the field as well and i was just yeah it was just such an unreal feeling so probably that one i'd have to have to say yeah that's just nuts oh yeah just when i first brazil <laughs> not much you know <laughs> oh god um 
What was it like to play in the Champions League? Champions, yeah, that was um, oh, that's a I forgot it. That's another amazing um, uh, something like it just doesn't feel real. Like I played in the Champions League. Uh, we played against a German team, Hoffenheim, and they they were very good. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win, but um, we we've qualified for Champions League again this year. So hopefully, we can get further um, this year, and hopefully. I can get some more game time, but yeah, yep. incredible. Yep, beautiful. I had we had a fair few as well come through. This is a couple. Brooke said uh, she misses you in Adelaide. Ellie says you're the best. Um, a Jap says idol, and a few others were just writing in just because you're obviously a superstar and they all love you, which I'm, <laughs> I'm now starting to to gather from all your experiences. <laughs> um, how does that feel when like? Like you're a 20 year old, obviously you're young, and people from maybe from home or even overseas now. You know, they're saying, you know, you're my idol, you're inspiration. Like, how does that feel to, especially young women coming through, um, to have that sort of impact? Yeah, it's, uh, I just feel, yeah, it's just an amazing feeling to know that you're inspiring the next generation and um, to think, like, I was only in their shoes not long ago. So, um, yeah, I, I do what I can to help, like, reach out with the fans and, um, yeah, but they're so great to get around all of us girls and, um and yeah it's what motivates me to keep working working hard yeah yeah have you got a piece of uh advice to if for, for young women coming through in football soccer um like just to just to obviously keep going with it um but any advice since you've now played professional yeah i think um i mean always believe in yourself but there's going to be like hard times if if you are like striving to be at the top there's going to be hard times um, but yeah, continue believing in yourself and, and never lose the fun of it. That's why we play. We have, we enjoy it. And I think that's so important to always enjoy what you do and yeah, and work hard. I um, might be cliche, but it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the, um, yeah, enjoy it, have fun, work hard, believe in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, beautiful. Um, all right. The last sort of thing that I like to do with everyone. Um, the next five years uh, for Charlie, I love, I love a good nickname for Charlie. Next five years, um, I've called it sort of like your peak. Like, what club? What what is your what is your peak that you want out of your football career? What club is it that you're at? Um, you know, obviously you want to go as far as you can, but what does that sort of look like for you? Yeah, so I would the the goal is to play in the the women's super league in England. Um, that would just be unreal to play in there. I mean, playing at Chelsea or like Arsenal, and um, that's probably the that's the goal um that would be incredible especially in the next five years um so that's where my my eye like my heart set on and um and then in between like those years like just trying to work hard to cement a spot in that Matilda squad and um be selected for as many you know competitions in there yeah yeah that was my next sort of question the Matilda expectations you always want to be a part of it um forever but you've is, is your group sort of young? Is it a little bit older? What can you expect? What can we expect from the Matildas over the next sort of five to ten years, especially with the, the likes of you and the younger girls coming through? Yeah, so there's definitely a, um, a young group coming through and um, and I think, uh, yeah, we're all getting a lot of great opportunities, which is, I think is really good, especially with some maybe some girls coming to the end of their career. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully... Um, we can step up to occasions, get more starting time and um, hopefully it's a smooth transition and um, we can, yeah, step up to how good the older girls are. They're doing yep. amazing. And, um, yeah, they're all our, our idols. Um, but, yeah, um, that's, a, that's a goal. Yeah, unreal. Uh, and lastly, away from away from football, everyone loves a good side hustle. What's going on sort of in your life? What's some goals um, outside of sport that you may want to achieve and, and what you're doing? Yeah, so I'm doing a bit of – well, at the moment I'm having a bit of break from studying. I'm going to try and learn some Swedish, trying to yes. get a um, – but then um, I've just – I was doing a Bachelor of Health Science, but I've just transferred to psychology. So I'll start that a bit later on in the year when I've got my Swedish sorted and then, um, <laughs> yeah, see how psychology goes, but that's the main – interest right now and um the psychology course will probably take a few more than the years that that's set to do because i'll do it part-time but yeah. um 
good to have a backup, um, especially, and also good to have a balance. Keep your mind off football. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm going to get you back on the podcast sometime, and I want you to be able to speak fluent in Sweden, <laughs> uh, in Swedish. Yeah. Fluent. I want, I want absolute sentences, clear as day. I don't want anything less than that. <laughs> Um, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, having you on. This is, I, I, you're going to get it. Like you say about a lot of guests, but this has actually been a really, really fun. You, you're definitely my favorite so far. We've just laughed. It's been really good. Um, I, I've liked to with like recently, not just talk about, um, you know, what you're doing sporting wise. I have a lot of athletes on, um, but just getting to know you a little bit more and, um, all the funny little segments we have in between. It's been really fun. So I appreciate you uh, coming on. What time is it over there at the moment, by the way? Uh -huh. It is seven fifty. I'm an early riser, not usually. But is it in the morning? What? Why are you on the podcast that early? That's nuts. Thank you so much. That's crazy. I honestly, again, poor performance by me. Didn't even look at what time it was when you're like, oh, five no, Australian no time. I was just like, ah, nah, I'm sure it should be like during the day. I don't know when it, when it is over there. But no, nah, I appreciate you coming on. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and, and yeah, best of luck with with everything over there in, in the next sort of five, ten years, and in, in your free career. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me on, Bailey. It's a great fun.